Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to jump back on the uh, AT2MX. Uh, we're going to start building the top end. Uh, first thing I've got to do is I've got to do a little uh, surgery on my cylinder head. I'm using the 74-75 uh, uh, 125MX uh, head because I can get those and it's uh, got the centralized plug as if you've been following uh, the uh, video that I did the CCing of the cylinder heads in we talked about that so let me get you overhead and we'll go over it just just for another minute here okay I've got a the one I've got here is conveniently broken here on this side and what I need to do is cut it right about here and it's got a little dish here. I think that's for like the cables or something. Uh, it's actually probably for the, the tack cable so it doesn't have to be uh, on there to start with. But I've got to cut this just like I did the cylinder in order to clear my MX pipe. So that's what, that's what this is about. And I'll probably just go ahead and give it this just so it'll look right. And it, it actually extends out a little bit further than the uh, one for this bike. But like I said, these I can get. They have the same basic uh, CC's capacity that the, uh, the one for this, the MX cylinder head does. And this is an MX cylinder head, but it's for 74 to 76, I think. It's uh, what they call the 401. So uh, I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and we're going to cut it just as well. It's broken anyway. Up or I'm going to end up blinking my blade. I'll try it from the top here. I can't see my line, but I kind of know where I need to end up.
Okay, somehow or another I just just about went by my line here and ended up where I need to be. Now I just need to cut out the little piece here. I think I can do most of that with, uh, with a grinder. Okay. Looks like we're just about right. Got maybe a little sanding to do right there. And that is just sharper than a knife. So I'll kind of sand that a little bit. This is the portion that we cut off. And I just need to grind a little bit here for this. It's not really necessary, but it, it'll dress up that broken edge. So I'll go ahead and do that just with a grinder. And you can tell there that uh, that's just about where it needs to be. Probably not going to go all the way where my line is because the I'd be into the fin kind of so I don't I really don't need this I'm just trying to clean up where it was broken I think I can get most of that out of there Okay, there we go. Should be just about right. I've got two bolts in here to kind of hold it. I can say this, I'm, I don't really need. I just did what I could to contour it to make it look right. And uh, then this here was really all I needed, I think. Well, the final uh, decision will be made when we get, get ready to put the pipe on. So I'll probably put all this uh, on without torquing the head down and then put the pipe on just to see if it's gonna, gonna do what we want it to do. So I've got that pretty well chamfered and I think this in here was, it was knife sharp. So I think that's, uh, I think that's gonna do what we need it to do. Like I say, it's a little bit bigger here. It was sold to me as a 75 MX 125 head the besides being the proper capacity the centralized plug is a big plus so that should make everything uh, you know it just it's better to have that central centrally located okay a little quick trip through the uh, bead blaster and it looks more like it should The cylinder actually needs to go through it too. <laughs> I, all I've done is run it through the uh, uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So I'll go ahead and bead blast it and then uh, I'll put them both back through the ultrasonic cleaner to clean the, the uh, glass beads out. And then we'll start our assembly. And show you what the uh, fitment looks like here. Uh, the carburetor, I don't know if you can see this, but the nut down here at the bottom where you change the main jet is a little close. 
So what I'm thinking about doing, what I actually what I wanted to do was change to a remote bowl, but I can't find anything for these new carburetors like that. Uh, so the bowl pattern on these are different than the older ones that like came on this bike. So I'm gonna have to do something to make it fit and I can't take hardly anything off that nut because it, uh, it goes down into it really deep. So I could probably only take like a 16th of an inch maybe. So what I think I'm gonna have to do is change the angle of this right here, uh, make it a little deeper here and about the same there and try to get this at a little more of an angle to get this up off of it. I don't think it'll take much, but I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm, I'm gonna think about it a little bit more before I jump into it. Uh, but as far as the head goes, <clears throat> it looks like everything is uh, fitting pretty good there. I've got the pipe on. And when we come around this side, you can see we've got a gap in between the pipe and the head there. So we're just the way we should be. And the, uh, you can see where I cut the fins on the cylinder. Everything is just about as it should be there. So I think we're in good shape. And uh, I've got to put a little clearance right here too. Uh, this, evidently these new uh, breather tubes are a little bit taller, so I'll just uh, grind a little bit off the bottom of that uh, uh, mounting area right there. But I think this uh, carburetor, see we've got to go to 26 millimeter, and it's just, it's just bigger with this uh, float bowl the way it is. If I could get something different, I'd sure do it. But I think this is what we're gonna have to do is just give it a little bit more of an angle here and we should be able to clear all right. I haven't got any of this bolted on. It's just sitting there. But you can kind of tell that it, uh, I think it looks pretty cool. It ought to run good, I think. And this is the one we've got the internal rotor that we make, made the Magneto from the uh, YZ or MX engine also. So I'm gonna think about it overnight and we're gonna probably do something with that in the morning. Okay guys, on the, uh, on the angle of the carburetor, I th what, I, what I need is maybe four to five degrees and what I think I'm going to try to do is just hold this down in a, uh, on an angle plate at about that and try to cut my angle here and then I'll just have this spacer plate. Uh, hopefully that will give me enough extra angle to get that carburetor up off the cases. So I'm going to go ahead, I, I just cut a piece of, uh, uh, it's about I can't remember what it was. I don't think it's quarter. Yeah, it is. Quarter inch uh, aluminum plate that I had laying here. So I've got to cut this, uh, the size of it after I get my angle. So all the holes and Everything, I'm, I've got to cut the angle while I've got extra out here to hold it down. And uh, then I'll work on the rest of it after that. So I just kind of set my angle table up here. And uh, give me a couple of hold downs here on each end.
just kind of square this up best I can. Yeah, it's close enough the girls I go with. All right, let's get our first cut going here. Set this up at four extra degrees, so we'll see how that turns out. I might run out of material here, I don't know. And it may be way too much, too. I don't know. It's kind of hard to judge. Got a sneaking suspicion I'm gonna be I'm gonna run out of material before I get the final cut. I probably don't need as much as I'm doing here. I'm getting pretty thin. Let me uh, reposition this before I get too far along and see if I maybe bring it up a degree.
All right, I think that, if it's enough angle, that will work better. I'll back it off to three degrees. I was just afraid I was going to get too thin on this end. think I don't need much I don't need much to raise that up so I'm hoping that'll do it that's three degrees cut the center out now and I just need to get a, a starting point and I'm at an angle here so I go in slowly so it doesn't deflect my drill bit
Hey, there's our hole. Okay, we've got our holes all drilled. We'll kind of chamfer these just a little bit. So we've got the flat side and we've got the tapered side here. Let's take it over there and see if we can see any difference. Okay guys, looks like we've got just what we need. We're off the cases there. Everything is, uh, I've got two bolts in. The others, I may have to uh, take a rat tail file and open that up a little bit, but it's pretty close. Looks pretty trick, doesn't it? Okay, I think we're ready to kind of start our installation here. Uh, here's what we ended up with, with our uh, adapter. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's thinner here and actually about the same thickness as the parent metal was here. So uh, I did a three degree to get the, the amount of lift in the back from from that uh, carburetor so what we need to do now is you do if you do something like this you're going to need one more gasket which i've got here so that's going to start like that and then your your thin part is going to go toward the top now you could you can cut this off and you would really never know it was there I'm going to elect to leave this, these wings on because I, I feel like it kind of gives it a trick look and it also is going to dissipate a little bit of heat. This, these wings sticking out here are going to be like a couple more fins. So I, I can't see any uh, you know, down reason to uh, uh, leave them on. I just think it'll help if, if anything uh, to dissipate a little more heat. So okay, we stick the one gasket in and then we'll need another one here. Then our reed plate and then our intake. This type of intake is only for the MX models. Now since uh, this end is thicker, it gets a longer bolt. These are a little bit too long, but that's all I've got right now, so I'm going to use them. And the shorter ones go on the top.
probably better not tighten those quite as tight until I get them all in. <clears throat> I did have to take a little rat tail file and uh, clean up, I think, two of those screw holes. They were just a little bit off. Not bad. All right, and I relieved that just a little bit for that uh, vent. So that should be okay. And you can see that these screws are just a little bit long. If I cut them off, then they'd rust. So I'm just gonna leave them. Uh, next time I'm at the hardware store, I'll try to pick up some that are a uh, quarter of an inch shorter. Okay, so there we go. I think it looks kind of trick. Uh, I'll get some lacquer thinner and get that off of there. Next thing we need to do is get our exhaust donut in there and our flange. Uh, one, one interesting note on these flanges, uh, the ones that have the hole for the spring are 72 and up uh, because they, these cylinders are not drilled. The older ones had uh, the fins drilled for the spring for, for the uh, exhaust pipe. These here are like this and they will go, the spring keeper will go up, down in this case, the way it's looking, but. Okay, and I think actually I'm going to put a little anesthesia on those bolts. Let me do that real quick. Okay, we got the, I put the anesthesia on the intake and the exhaust. Just a, just a good thing to do, uh, especially on the exhaust side. Let's see, get our ring. Let's just get that in here and push it down a little bit with our piston. And the book tells me on the single ring, the GYT kit piston uh, ring set, it's uh, 16 to 24 thousandths. And with uh, what I'm doing, I'm coming in right at 22 thousandths. It's a little wider on these than it is on the uh, two ring enduro piston because you're creating more heat. So they want a little bit more of a gap on it. So we're within the range that they give us. Okay, one other thing on this, uh, on this build, this is gonna be a premix. So we're gonna block off our injection port and make sure you put a copper washer or something on there at least that's going to form fit to that and it's the same threads as the uh, the banjo bolt just be careful tightening it up with the copper you shouldn't need to uh, too much uh, tight okay so that looks like we're just about ready to go there and uh, we're all clean here. I've already got the gasket on the engine over there. I was using that as uh, uh, so that I would have everything in play when I was getting this thing fixed up so that uh, I'd end up with uh, exactly what I needed as far as uh, the play or the distance. I've already got one uh, clip in, circlip. I put that one in on 
the side away from me. And in this case, I believe I can go ahead and put the ring on. These are uh, the Dykes type rings. Actually, they're not, they're a keystone. So they're tapered on one side. I was thinking these were dykes, but they're not. Okay, so we're all good there. Uh, hang on. All right, guys, uh, just going through the carburetor here, trying to get it as much the same as I can. This is a late model 26 millimeter carburetor. The, the, you can see here the, how deep this is, the, where the jet goes at the bottom here. And that's why I couldn't take anything really off here. Uh, and you can also notice that this is a more of a square carburetor than the, uh, the ones of the day they were a little bit more rectangular, and that's why those float bowls will not fit on these. Uh, this is what they refer to as the VM26-8074. What This is what McCooney calls their two-stroke 26 millimeter. There's another one, and this is the one you want if you're uh, gonna buy one for a two-stroke. And with the 125MX in 72, uh, we were supposed to, this is the AT2M, also known as the MX, uh, parts list. And this is what I have in this carburetor, as far as jets go. Uh, up here, it tells me that my pilot jet for the 125MX should be a 60, and I do have a 60. That's right here. The valve seat, otherwise the needle and seat, should be a, uh, a 2.5, and I have a 2.5. The Let's see, the nozzle, which is also known as the needle jet, should be an N8, that's what this one is. And the main jet should be somewhere between a 180 and a 200. Uh, I'm at a bit, little over 4,000 feet, so I'm gonna elect to go with a 190, and that's what I've got in it. Uh, let's see. The needle should be a 4F15 in the third groove, and mine isn't. I've got a 5F21 in the third groove. I'm going to try to find one, but if I can't, I'll go ahead and, and uh, go with this one. And one other thing that is different is the slide this right here uh, you've got a cut out they're always marked here at the bottom mine is a two and the uh, 125 mx was a 2.5 uh, i think i can find this i'm not sure on the needle but uh, those are the two items i'm going to try to locate uh, this may run just fine the way it's set up but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get those two pieces just in case I, I need some more air. Uh, that's what this is going to give me. And I believe this is going to be a little richer, maybe, than the, uh, the 4, the 4F. So we'll, we'll see what we're going to need. But in the day, they ran a 26 millimeter carburetor, a VM26 SC and that is this is a brand new one i bought it from summit racing equipment they have a lot of mccooney parts and carburetors very uh i think i gave about 
$75 for this brand new and it is a real Makuni. The, like I say, the big difference is that it has the uh, jet access on the bottom of the bowl, which is the reason that we had to, to do this plate. Okay, let me get this thing put back together. Uh, we've only got two items that we need to get if we can find them. And we may not even need those, but I'm going to attempt to find them anyway. All right, back over here to the bike, and I think we're about ready to put this thing together. We already got the base gasket on. So I've already got the one clip in on the that side so I'm going to go ahead and lubricate my piston and pan a little bit with some Yama lube and we'll just Trying to get it started here. And the same with our bearing. Holes to the back. Put my paper towel back in there and get the clip back, get the clip in, hopefully without any incident. Kind of get it in there, then get your finger over the hole so it can't come out. There it is. And just make sure that it's, it's in the groove all the way around. And it is. And we've got the ring oriented. Right here is where the pin is on the, the uh, piston. I'm just going to get a little lube in the groove there. And we're going to lubricate the cylinder also. Get it up here. Check the orientation of the ring. Now, before I slide that all the way down, I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to get my, uh, get a little anti-seize on these uh, studs here on the threads. Let me go grab that. Get a little on, you don't need a lot. Just enough on the threads to so that put them up close to the top so that the uh, it will help the the threading as it goes as the nut goes on. All right, 
Let's see if she'll slide down now. And there it is. Yep, okay. Okay, I was thought about this just before I put it on because I'd been wanting to make sure I check it. So I've got some 400 grit sandpaper here and some soap and water. I've got some dicum uh, on the, uh, the surface here. So I'm gonna lap it a little bit just to verify flatness. Yeah, it looks like we've got a little bit. There's there's some pecker marks along on top of it too, but uh, that's a lot of what's what the red is showing up. But it does look low here and probably right here. So I'm going to continue with this a little bit and see how far I can get. Won't be able to get all those pecker marks out, but we'll do what we can. You know, if you if you do too much then you uh, you change the capacity of the uh, squish area. Yeah, see it's uh, mostly the pecker marks that are showing up, but we've still got a little too much here, so I'll keep on it for a little bit. This is cleaning up pretty nice actually, uh, but I, I feel that this is kind of a low spot. That's where most of the red that's in the pecker marks really, it, it would probably be okay at this point, but I'm really gonna try to get just a little bit more. Uh, I haven't been at it very long and this is 400 grit, so I think we'll be okay. I'm just, I'd like to get this a little bit more like this here. So I'm gonna hang, it, hang with it just a little bit more. Okay, turned out pretty nice. I'm happy with it. So let's go ahead and get this back in there. Okay, I've got to start it here and I'm just going to start torquing. Uh, the final torque should be about 180 inch pounds. And I'm going to start off here at uh, 50. Then go up to, uh, let's say 80. and do this in a, a cross pattern. You can see where I'm going with this, just, you know, in the increments so that it's going on uh, flat. Because that's how you warp them by not tightening them up evenly. Now the book doesn't really give you a torque, but in the back of the book, it gives you what an eight millimeter bolt is supposed to be torqued to. And that's what I'm using. Final torque, 180 inch pounds.
and there we go. And it all looks okay. Okay, I've got my plug for the offset side. And I put a little anesthesia on that. and a BADS right dab in the middle I think they're calling for a 9 I don't have one so I'm going to start with an 8 and do some plug readings as I go along And also put a little anesthesia on that. You can hear the reed valves. They're kind of whistling. That's got some nice compression. A lot more than a normal uh, enduro engine. Uh, the engine is still loose in here, so if you've seen it move, I haven't tightened it up in the frame yet. Been doing a lot of uh, fixturing and whatnot, so uh, I just haven't got to it yet. All right, now let's uh, take a look at the carburetor install, which is not a big thing. It's just going to go here. I think I've still got to get a clamp for it. I'll have to look and see if I've got one. And let me get you over here where you can. Kind of see there. You can see that there's plenty of gap in between the case and the bottom of the carburetor. And we still don't have an extreme angle. Uh, there is one, there's an angle. There is on the, uh, on the factory one. But if all is the way it should be, this is three degrees more. Uh, and that's got us up off of it. So I think it looks pretty good. I think the install is... Uh, is good. I think it's pretty cool. I, I really kind of like the looks of the of the uh, wing here on this and that will actually since aluminum dissipates heat a lot faster than uh, a lot of you know like cast iron or something uh, it is gonna it's out here in the air, so it's, it's going to dissipate more heat into the air. So there you go. Just a little tidbit for anybody that uses a torque wrench from time to time. Uh, always, when you're done with them, set them to the lowest setting. It takes the strain off the spring inside and it'll, it'll stay calibrated longer better so always set it to the lowest setting when you're done and you're going to put it in storage okay guys there you have it uh, i think it's a pretty clean install uh, but just the whole objective was just to get the carburetor off the case uh, the cases here and we did that and we've got uh, we've got the 70 
74, 74 to 76 head, I think it is, installed. Uh, everything went as it should be there. And we're ready for some premix in this one. Uh, I'm going to get the exhaust pipe painted up and get the engine tightened up and go over a few other preliminaries. Not real sure what I'm going to do for air cleaner yet. I have one that it kind of fits over here. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to adapt that one or not. I have got to get a turn and that's you know, that's uh, really doing an extreme turn. Uh, that hurts the flow. Uh, I don't know yet what I'm gonna do, but I don't need a lot of this stuff. So I may have to go and cut this out and put a uh, support that's round that you can run the filter through. Uh, I'm not real sure if I can get something that I can uh, make a uh, I think the regular MX air cleaner hose makes this kind of dog leg. They're pretty expensive. I'm not sure whether, it, maybe KDI's uh, repopping them. I don't know. I'll have to take a peek and see. Uh, anyhow, I've got to work on something there. And, you know, the worst case scenario is I may have to cut this out and uh, reinforce it and, uh, that way it'll give me a hole to run a uh, sock type filter or a K&N filter out of. A sock, a sock is not what I want to use. A K&N, yes yeah, sir, those are good. Anyhow, thanks for going along on the ride guys and we'll see you next video.